Hey everyone, thanks for purchasing the new Knock on Elevate Rest. I'm certain that this rest is going to be the most versatile and multi purpose rest on the market. Really taking a bulletproof design that AAE had and made a lot of changes and adjustments that I really wanted to bring to the target archers as well as the bow hunters and give you a wide range of different options to use regardless of the style of archer you shoot. This is an unbelievable rest that really gives you the option to set it up as a limb driven system to the top or bottom, a cable driven system, and you have the option to set it up as a launcher blade, or you can use either of the driven systems with a target blade as well. So you have a magnitude of options. So what I'm going to do is just jump right in to unpackaging the Elevate and showing you all those different features and how easy it is to assemble it, make adjustments, and then mount it on your bow. So the first thing that you're going to want to do is obviously remove your Elevate from the package. And what you'll find is inside of the card, there's actually a little reading right here telling you to go to the YouTube channel mainly to find this, which hopefully that's why you're here. And then they'll also show you some basic instructions that is from a previous model AAE, not completely the Elevate. But uh, from there, you're gonna be able to unpackage this and find several different things. First, you're gonna find your arrow rest that, what that will come with the whale tail already installed. This is gonna come out of the package really set up for you, the hunter, that's wanting a limb-driven system to the bottom limb, which is where I prefer. Um, it's gonna have the arrow holder installed. Um, this is removable later. We'll show you how to do that. The cable will be installed, um, but we'll walk you through this process. But this is set up exactly how I prefer to put it on my bow out of the package. That's gonna be with a half cage. Um, I really prefer the half cage, however, if you want the full cage, then that's gonna be included here with your packet of all the accessories. When you unbag your accessories, you're gonna find the full containment cage along with an extended Allen wrench that allows you to get to those. You're gonna have the single limb clamp, which is the preferred clamp, works great with PSEs, Matthews, Hoyt, Botex, you're gonna have your main arrow rest bolt. You're gonna have a secondary Allen wrench, which is really important to use whenever you attach your mounting blocks, um, which this mounting block here will have the freak launcher already installed, and then you'll also have a wild, wide launcher available. You're gonna have a rubber pad that sticks to the top of your riser that allows you to cradle your arrow if you choose. Um, from there, you're gonna have the felt pad, this allows you, because it's in strips, to put it on several different places, whether you want to put it on the inside of your ring, inside of your riser, on the whale tail itself. Um, you also have a Teflon coated pad that's notched out, which works perfectly on the whale tail. From there, you're going to have a single limb attachment system. This is for an older style single limb style bow allows you an easy attachment for your cable from there you're going to have the small sandwich clamp which is for a cable driven system and you're going to have the spring that you would need to change out if you wanted to be cable driven instead of limb driven now one of the first things that you're going to need to decide is do you want to keep the whale tail launcher do you want to keep the arrow holder, do you want to convert it to a launcher style blade, or do you want to change out the containment system? So if you want to change out the containment system, there's two screws that are silver located on the inside of that cage. And that's why you have this extended Allen wrench so that you can get in there to those screws. The other thing is, if you like the cage that you have on there, or if you've replaced the cage, you also want to be able to adjust it up or down. You have that, a full range of adjustment depending on 
how flat this needs to go to your riser. Okay, for most bows, I found that pulling this up to where it's up almost to its highest point is the best place to have it. And you're gonna to wanna to make sure that you tighten those down properly using your Allen wrench. Once you've selected your cage, then the next thing you should decide is which type of launcher arm or launcher bracket you're gonna want. Now with the whale tail, you still have the decision whether or not you wanna keep this automatic arrow holder or whether you wanna replace it with the blade. Either way, there's two black set screws that are underneath the silver set screws that when you loosen those, it allows you to have left and right adjustment which as you set this rest up, your initial left and right should be adjusted with this and then utilize your micro adjust for the fine tuning. But if you don't want the arrow holder, all you have to do is remove this bracket and then the arrow holder is simply a magnet that sticks underneath. You can remove that and you can load it back on. The main thing is regardless of which of these launcher arms you choose, you need to recognize that there's actually a flat spot on the top of this extension bar and you want to make sure that your set screws are going down on to the flat spot of that bar. So you want to do your main left to right adjustment. You want to make sure that you tighten these down properly regardless of whether you want your arrow holder, a launcher blade, or the whale tail. And I would highly recommend utilizing a very fresh Allen key. That's why we've put these new smaller Allen keys in with your packet so that you avoid rounding out any of these smaller set screws. A brand new Allen wrench really lets you snug these down properly and make sure everything is perfectly tight. Now there's a few other screws that I want you to become familiar with. First off, this main silver bolt that's here on the top is what you need to loosen in order to adjust your left and right. And you can do that two ways. Either here on the inside, there's a small finger tab that allows you to turn it to adjust your micro adjust left and right. But if you can't get your finger in there, there's a secondary cap screw right here on the outside and it also shows you that if you turn it counterclockwise it will actually micro adjust your rest to the right. So obviously clockwise would turn it the other direction. For that you can use a standard hex key. Now for your up and down micro adjustment you're going to notice this main side silver cap head screw. If you loosen that then you have a full size knob on the bottom to be able to turn this so that you will then see your micro adjustability going up or down with the arrow rest. Now another screw that you should be familiar with is this silver screw that's a set screw that's right here on the end of this lever arm. This set screw is what allows you to actually make the adjustment or remove your steel cable. Now you do have the option to either use the steel cable or a synthetic D-loop material if you choose for your cable driven systems. Now the next thing I wanna make you familiar with is this main set screw right here that goes into the silver collar. This set screw is what controls your blade angle. Depending on how you have that collar set will determine how your blade angle is. Now for most hunters, you're gonna want this whale tail at the angle that it comes standard at, which is slightly higher than what a target archer would prefer by lowering the blade angle slightly. Now, if you wanna make an adjustment here, there's a few things that you need to keep in mind. One, we sent this rest out with a small rubber sleeve on this peg right here. You can see this small clear plastic tube that'll be on that peg, and that's really a silencing piece for when the rest comes up. Now, if you're a target archer, you may want to remove that clear rubber sleeve just to be more repetitive. However, if you prefer the silent method and the standard method that we have, go ahead and leave that clear tube on there. But if you want to make an adjustment to your angle, then what I need you to do is actually adjust your side lever arm 
so that it moves the angle of the rest to where you want it. And from there, I prefer to utilize this small locking screw that's on the bottom of the rest. And you can make your slight adjustment to your angle. And then when you do that, you can actually tighten down that lower holding screw. And you can see that it will leave the appropriate space here between your steel collar that has a set screw and the stopping peg. And from there, if you have the angle you want, you would loosen the screw, the set screw, move the collar so that it's touching the peg and tighten that down firmly. Again, it's important to use a new Allen wrench or an Allen wrench that's perfectly square on the edges. From there, you can slightly loosen this lower set screw and you're free moving once again. You don't want to over tighten this. You want to tighten it just enough so that you can adjust your blade and hold it so that you can make that final adjustment to the collar. Now there's a few more things that I want you to be familiar with. One, it's always important that your lever arm is adjusted so that it has clearance underneath the main bracket of your rest for left and right micro adjustment. That's why we initially did most of our adjustment here with the two screws that hold the main launcher bracket on. Now there's two screws on your lever arm. One is on the side, which helps compress your collar and your rod. And the other one is the actual set screw that's right here in the back. Now this set screw and the side compression screw both work together. Now if you wanna change either your spring tension or if you want to change this from a lower limb driven system to an upper limb driven system, then there's a couple different ways to do it. I prefer to tighten the set screw that's underneath so that it'll hold your rest in place. And from there, all you need to do is loosen your set screw. And then, and you'll notice that this spring tension will start to change. And again, if this goes, if this lever arm goes above the main bracket, it's not going to be able to freely turn left and right. So you're going to need to make sure there's space there. Now, if you remove this side screw with the washer, be careful not to lose the washer. Then you're going to be able to remove this lever arm and expose the spring unit. The spring that comes standard in the rest is the one for the limb driven systems. The other spring is a reverse spring to this one and it's for a cable driven. But what you need to know whenever doing anything with the spring or the lever arm is that on the inside of the exposed rest, you're going to see a small hole on the upper right hand corner, which is where the leg of the spring is going to need to completely seat into. From there, on the inside of your lever arm, there's actually two small holes that are also for the opposite leg of the spring. Now in the position that's standard on the rest, which is for a bottom limb driven system, you'll notice that your set screw is on the top and there's also a hole just inside of that set screw. So if you wanted to keep it to a lower limb driven system, you would simply slide the leg of that spring into that hole closest to that set screw. And then you would turn this back down into position, push it all the way in, slightly snug down your set screw here on the back, completely reinstall your main side compression screw and then firmly tighten the set screw that's here on the back. And again, this position is for a lower limb driven setup. Now, if we're going to change this around so that we have an upper limb driven system, then what we're going to need to do is we're going to have to remove the set screw and we're going to change its location to the hole that's actually closest to the long part of the lever arm. When we put that set screw back to that location, 
Now we're going to reinstall this side lever arm. And again, this is for an upper limb driven system. Now we're going to install the leg of the spring into the screw, into the small hole that's closest to the set screw, closest to the lever arm. But we're also going to need to make sure that the lever arm is actually facing back, just like this. This is the proper setup for an upper limb driven system. And again, you're going to want to make sure that when you tighten your set screw, it tightens down on the flat spot of the rod. And you're also going to want to make sure that when you tighten that down, you lightly tighten the top set screw first, fully tighten your compression screw in the side, and then completely tighten the top set screw one last time. Keep it rolling. Now, once you've firmly seated down your compression screw and completely tightened your set screw, then at that point, whenever you've made an adjustment, you should loosen that screw that's on the bottom so that you're able to freely move. Now, if you feel like there's any type of binding then obviously something that you've just done is slightly off. So you want to always make sure that you have free movement after you've made that adjustment. The limb driven bracket is super easy to install. It's pretty much a sandwich. There's two screws that you want to evenly tighten down back and forth. Be sure that you don't over tighten either of the screws and end up cracking the bracket and you want to make sure that the bracket is always free of the cam as it's drawn back and also this limb sandwich should always be on the same side of the bow as the rest is mounted so for a right-handed shooter this will be on the right limb if you're a left-handed shooter it would be on the bottom left limb for the single solid limb clamp, you'll want to seat it all the way down in the center of the V of the limb, making sure that you're free of the cam as it's drawn forward. And you're going to want to make sure that the cable inserted side is on the inside of the limb. Now to convert this to a cable driven system, I've went ahead and snugged the bottom set screw to hold the main rod. And now we're going to take the spring that came in the small bag, which is a reverse spring. We'll slide the leg of the spring into that hole that's at the one o'clock position in the rest body. And then we're going to take this lever arm and we're actually going to do something opposite of what we did for the limb driven system. And we're going to have to have the set screw on the top part of the lever arm, but we're going to utilize the hole that is opposite the set screw. And we're going to put the other leg of the spring into that hole. And then we're going to slightly turn the rest, turn the lever arm until it's pointing back and until you're able to slightly snug down the set screw and then fully install the compression screw on the side. Once both of those screws are fully tightened, then the last thing to do is to loosen the set screw that's on the bottom of the rest. Since this is a cable driven system, when this is loosened, your rest is going to want to go down. Now in this system, it's set up so that they're launcher will lay on top of the shelf of the riser. So for some people, they prefer to actually keep that rest in the up position with that set screw tightened until 
they install this rest on the bow and then you can loosen the bottom set screw which would allow your whale tail to lay flat against the riser. The cable driven system is a simple sandwich clamp that you want to firmly tighten both of the Phillips head screw drives. Then you can feed your cable through the sandwich and then use the set screw underneath to tighten down your cable. Mounting the rest is super easy. You just take the riser bolt that came with the rest and install it into your burger buttonhole on the side of your riser. Finger tighten the rest down and make sure that you have it adjusted forward or back to where you would like it to be and also make sure that you haven't tightened down this silver set screw yet. You want to make sure that that's actually backed out just so that it doesn't bind on the riser when you fully tighten the burger button bolt. The other thing you want to do is make sure that your rest is parallel. You don't want it kicked up, you don't want it kicked down. Once you've tightened the burger button fully, then go ahead and tighten down your secondary set screw and your rest is perfectly mounted. Now initially you want to set your center shot to where the arrow is running true through the riser by utilizing these bottom set screws and from there you can actually use your micro adjustment later on to fine tune your left and right. Once your rest is mounted then I would recommend go ahead and installing the cable into your limb clamp regardless of which one you have and you don't want to have a lot of excess here because the excess we're actually going to pull through the rest itself. Now once you've got your arrow rest at the height and the left and right that you want the last thing that you're going to want to do is remove the slack that's in the cable to put the rest in the position that you need it for either the limb driven or the fall away positioning. So again, we've gone ahead and we've tightened the cable to the clamp of our choosing already. So to remove the slack, what I would recommend is take the Allen wrench that we've included with the rest and go ahead and put it in that set screw that's at the front of the lever arm. Then what I do is I use that Allen wrench as leverage to pull the rest down while I pull the slack out of the cable. And once I've done that, I can go ahead and tighten down the set screw on that cable. And you can see that the arrow rest is in the full downward position and it's super easy from there you have the choice of how much of this excess cable you want to remove. I would recommend not cutting it too short so that it's still easy to pull it through later on if you ever have to raise it again to start over with a new tune. The Teflon strip that's included with your rest can be used to silence the whale tail or if you prefer you can use one of the small strips of felt to do a number of silencing. You can either use that on the whale tail. You can also use it on the inside of the arrow holder. You can use it on the inside of your cage. Or if you're worried about the sound that the arrow holder makes when it flips over, if you want to silence that, then all you need to do is while your arrow holder is in this position, take a small piece of your felt and stick it right on this magnet and it'll actually block the sound from your arrow holder flipping around. Well, as you can see, the Elevate is super easy to adjust. It's easy to install and I'm certain no matter if you're going out in the field or you're going to the target range, 
This aero rest is going to do everything that you need. If you're thriving to continually learn more about how to properly set up your bows and also great shooting form tips, make sure you watch more videos right here at the Knock On Archery YouTube channel, or you should really tune in to the Knock On TV Facebook page and check out some of my live feeds. I've done some great feeds setting up the different kinds of rests out there, and each week we continue to educate you on being a better archer.